So, um, I just got done, um, well, I, well, I won't say I, I got done with it, but, I, well, yeah, I just got done with work. I happened to ran across a, a white supremacist. He, he wasn't fucking with me or anything, but um, I noticed uh, when he came through the door, I noticed a white supremacist, a white dude with a swastika tattoo. Uh, we, I didn't talk to him. We just had, he, had, he was coming along with his family and shit. But, you know, it's pretty funny how, you know, you know, it, it, you know, it's pretty funny how they, they can just randomly appear and, you know, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm very hell on when, when I see white men with tattoos. When I see a white man with a tattoo, I look, I look at it. I look at, I find things. I look for American flag. I look for a swastika. I look for, um, any hail Hitler, um... Um, you know, symbols or whatever, you know. But anyways, um, I, there's a big buzz going on about this movie called Loving. And it's about this interracial couple that's breaking rape, the legal and civil whatever boundaries. They, you know, they went to jail for a year, I think, because their marriage was illegal. And um, I really don't give a shit about this movie. I really don't care for it. But a lot of um, black people need this movie, especially black women. They need this movie because once Trump comes into office, you know, um, this dream of the innocent white boy, the good, happy-go-lucky white boy who doesn't care about racism, he is, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's the ninth wonder of the world, you know, th those are really going to be coming up as a myth, th those good old white boys, that's why I kind of hope that Trump comes to office, I don't believe in his plans, I don't, like, he's going to be, he's not good for black folks, but, one thing when he does win is going to show that a lot of these white boys, they're not fucking with you. They're not fucking with you to, uh, with, with these biracial claims of, well, these interracial claims of making the world a better place, giving black women love, cultural appreciation, um... Or any type of multicultural bullshit lie. And um, these white boys are going to go back to their pr primitive nature. They're, they're already there, but it, it, to me, they're, they're kind of going soft on black women. But it's going to be really serious once Trump gets into office. And, um, you know, it's funny because I last week I saw... A, a, a dash cam video of a, a little girl getting manhandled by a white police officer. But hey, we're gonna have dumb bitches like Kristen and Karazin and um, popular interracial um, um, bloggers, famous bloggers, going on YouTube talking about white men treat us better. <laughs> and like, really, when these white boys are clotheslining you, suplexing you, um, spine bustering you and stuffing you in a in a police car and you're dead all of a sudden within two days of being in prison or t two days being in jail yeah they treat you a lot better you know and, and, you know I, I want these Negro Bedwinches to watch that movie loving and you know watch it just, just watch it and, you know, those are going to be the last days. Those are going to be the days you need to remember of, you know, the the, the, the miracle, you know, in hell. You know, you know all the racist whites in the 60s and 50s. You have this one good white boy who loves a black woman. And, you know, he fights for her and all that. Keep wishing. You know, watch that movie and keep wishing. Keep wishing that you will live in that type of world where you're going to have white men just like him in, in the vast majority.
you know, these, these white boys are not playing around, and I wish black women would understand that, but they don't. You know, they they don't get it, you know. I was watching, um, I was watching 16 and Pregnant. I've been watching it for the last month, and, um, I noticed that a lot of the biracial girls and, you know, black women too, they tend to have a thing for white boys and, you know, they, they've gotten pregnant by white boys. And the funny thing is that in most, all of the relationships have failed and, you know, they've separated. I know there was one funny episode where there was this black girl. Now get, now get this, now get this. The episode opened up with... Um, the teen girl that's being featured on the show, the teen mom, and her mother. And the show opens up like, with, with them saying, why does our men abandon us? And um, I think the mother, somebody said, because they're not real men, they're bitches, or they're, um, some, some, they, they try to throw shade, they try to throw shade at black men, and I find it kind of ironic to this twist was that the girl who's trying to put black men accountable for not taking care of the kids is married well not married is was pre- impregnated by a wigger she got impregnated by a white boy who's trying to act black he has dreads he doesn't have a job he has tattoos he don't want to work he can't work he don't want to do nothing all he does is want to smoke weed with his friends and cheat on his girl, and it, to me, I'm laughing at this shit because it's like, you 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 can't even be a good bedwitch, you you can't even do it right, and you're 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 you're, you're trying to drum major a beat for black women to date outside their race, and you can't even do it right, you know. You, you, you got with the, the wigger. You, you got with the whiteboard. I can't even get his shit together. You know. Don't want to work. Don't want to do shit. And I noticed this with other of the, the, the girls and the, other girls, other biracial girls in the 16 and pregnant series. They don't do, them white boys don't want to do shit. They don't have a bullshit job. And then they'll be like, oh, you know what? You know, I'm tired of that shit. They, they, they're going to be like, ah, I'm tired of this shit. There was one, um, there was, there was like really two other, two other biracial girls that had me laughing. And, um, one episode was with, um, it was with this, uh, this girl, her mom doesn't like biracial, no, her, her mom doesn't like white dudes. And so, um, she so she's upset that her daughter got got impregnated by this loser ass white boy. It's he, you know he's a loser, he's a lame, weird old dweeb. You know the, the type that would shoot a school. And um, you know she in in the, in the episode she she tells she reveals why she got with him because. Obviously, it pisses off her mom, and she kind of gets a kick out of that. But um, she got with him because he wouldn't cheat, and he's like, a, he's so lame and corny, is that it's a way that he, she's trying to get him whipped. <laughs> and so basically, you know, it's, she's using this kind of weird logic that since he's all lame and desperate, he has no friends, that um, he would stay with her. And throughout the episode, after she gets the baby, um, the baby's born, they're fighting over custody and all that shit. I had a, I had a good laugh, you know. To me, it's just like, yet again, you can't even do it right. And there's one more episode I'm trying to remember. Um, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the other one, damn. I know there was one girl, she got adopted. She was adopted into a white family. Got with a white boy. And, you know, she failed. Couldn't even do that shit, right? Um, trying to remember. I, I know another black girl, but she, she got with some light-skinned um, 
light skinned dude. And uh, he ended up going to jail for, I think, car burglary or some shit. So, you know, he, he won't even see his kid until he's like 32 or whatnot. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, you know but, but anyways, I, I really don't see how interracial dating is going to change the world, man. Because a lot of times these black women, they create more harm than good. And I've, I've used the logic, I mean, I've used the analysis that black women are, um, they're creating the very girls they hate. Um, black women are only with the white boys because they're trying to piss us off. And, um, you know, um, but obviously another problem is that they take us too seriously when we're young and they don't want to believe that we can change or we can grow, that we grow out of this shit. You know, niggas can grow out of the light skin bullshit, you know. I came from a relationship forum like last year and we brought up the topic of colorism and yeah, a lot of the dudes were on the light skin bullshit. But they got off it like, you know, it's like, you know, when they're in college and they've matured, they ain't, they ain't caring about light skin, you know, they just can't worry about getting girls, getting numbers, getting action, you know, <laughs> niggas ain't being that oversensitive about whether a bitch is light skin or not, I mean, you know, these, these females kill me with, like, they make it seem like every nigga on the planet is just on some coon shit, you know, that ain't the case, you know, but I'm gonna end this video here.